Nothing lasts forever. I hope I get this right because the story of chain drugstores in Vermilion is dizzying. I suppose this is because I'm truly a small town person. As a youngster I only recall two drugstores in the village, Hearts and Bomb Hearts. Ergo, if you were in need of medication or ice cream the choice was easy, the nearest was the best. But a few years after World War II, things began to change. The American economy was on the move. The furnaces of U.S. steel habitually lit the nighttime sky over Lorraine. The shipyards were jumping. And then the Ford Motor Company built its assembly plant on the eastern border of town, bringing a flood of families to the community. To address the everyday desires and needs of these families old businesses began to expand and new ones began popping up throughout the area. In a field on the south side of Liberty Avenue just across the street from the Crystal Beach Amusement Park at the eastern edge of the village proper, a then-modern shopping center was built. Two grocery chains, Kroger's and A&P, that had long occupied stores in the very heart of town found new homes therein, easily lured there by up-to-date amenities for their stores, as well as expanded and improved parking facilities. To be candid the removal of these stores from the main part of the village, however logical or inevitable, was not widely celebrated. Nonetheless, the writing was on the proverbial wall. It was the beginning of the end of the mom and pop stores. The era of corporate chain stores had officially arrived in Vermilion. The Marshall Drug Store occupied a large room on the northeast corner of the new South Shore Shopping Center in the early 1960s. In the accompanying photograph of the Marshall lunch counter, taken by local photographer Paul Ludlow in 1963, photojournal editor Bob Hallett and Dr. John Hal E. enjoy conversation and coffee while two unidentified waitresses stiffly pose for Ludlow's camera. It's hard not to take note of the food prices on the signs above the counter. A glass of lemonade went for 15 cents. A cake roll ice cream sundae was 24 cents. A BLT sandwich was 70 cents. And a twin burger, two ground beef patties, melted cheese, with onion, tomato, lettuce, and a special dressing, was only 55 cents. Wow. But back to the chains. It all started in Cleveland. A Canadian-born man named Marshall Wentworth Goodson 1864 to 1936 bought an interest in Arthur F. May's drugstore in the mid-1880s, that was once located where the terminal tower now stands. Eventually, he bought May out and began to stock proprietary medicines i.e. drugs that have a trade name and are protected by a patent. He was very successful. In 1940 the chain merged with Cunningham Drug but kept the Marshall name for a short time after it entered the Vermilion business scene. In the mid-1960s Gray Drug Stores Inc. bought 27 Ohio stores from the Cunningham Group. In 1981 Gray's acquired the 181-store drug fair chain, and had over 360 stores in the Midwest and East. In September of 1981 the Sherwin-Williams Company took over Gray Drug, and by 1982 the division had acquired 26 more Cleveland-area Cunningham stores as well. Finally, in 1987 Sherwin-Williams sold its gray drug chain to the Wright Aid Corp. for $165 million. Now, does that make your head spin, or what? To say that I prefer the mom-and-pop stores of a yesteryear is an understatement. But after my head stopped spinning I had to conclude that nothing, including chains, lasts forever.